everyone and welcome to the Quillen Physicians webinar on ordering labs and medications. We hope that this session will be useful for the clinical staff as well as for residents and physicians. Now ordering labs and medications are performed from the clinical desktop. So we're going to open a patient's chart by double clicking on our patient here in the daily schedule. And as you can see this automatically opens up the patient's chart. To order a lab on this patient, you go to the beaker icon on the clinical toolbar. Now if you notice this black arrow next to the icon, you'll see that you can be more specific in choosing which section you want to pull up. However, just clicking on the icon itself gives you access to all of these items. You'll just need to choose the correct tab once the screen has pulled up. This screen is called the ACI, which stands for Add Clinical Items. And as you can see, you have several tabs across the top. Everything that you will need to order on your patient can be accessed from this screen. Medications, labs and procedures, imaging, follow-up visits and referrals, patient instructions, immunizations, supplies, and medication administration. Since we're already on the Labs Procedures tab, we're going to go ahead and start here. To order a lab, you click in this search field, and you're going to type the first few letters of the lab. Now let's order an ESR on this patient. You can either type in ESR here, or the first few letters of the word sedimentation. If sedimentation rate automatically pulls up without your having to hit enter, that means that it's already located in your favorites list. If you type the word in and it doesn't pull up, then you will have to hit this binocular icon because that means that it has not yet been added to your favorites. Another thing that it's good to keep in mind while you're in working in all scripts is that less is more. So in other words, if you type in the entire phrase sedimentation rate, the test that you're looking for may not pull up. Sometimes items are named a little differently than what you may be used to, so it's a good idea to start getting into the system and begin searching for your most commonly used labs and tests. We also suggest that you start creating a favorites list, which we'll go over in a moment. Now once you've pulled up your lab, you can just click in the little checkbox next to it, and an order details screen will pull up. Now this is where you're going to provide the specifics of the order. The items in yellow are required, so the first field that you're going to need to fill in is the link to field in the upper right hand corner. Click on the down arrow, and a list of the patient's active problems will appear, will appear along with the health maintenance, which automatically populates. Now, if you have a patient who has just called in and you want to order a test without their having been, been seen, you are going to have to add an active problem from the clinical desktop before you open up the lab and try and order it. So here we're going to go ahead and choose rheumatoid arthritis. And then we're going to go down here and make sure that the performing location and the due dates are correct. This information is automatically populated, but it's a good idea to get into the habit of double checking to make sure it, it is correct, especially when you first begin to use the system. Now notice here that the additional details section is open, and there's a required item that needs to be filled in here, as you can see by the bright yellow color. The name of the ordering physician, the person who is logged in, will automatically be filled in here on the ordered by screen as well as in the managed by field. However, the supervised field needs to be filled in individually each time. We have set the system up so that a resident can start a patient note, but in order for the labs and medications to be ordered, the supervising physician will need to sign off on this order. So you'll need to click on the binoculars here, type in the name of your physician, and we're going to use one of our fake physicians here, and then choose the one you want and hit OK. As you notice, the yellow disappeared as soon as we filled that field in. Now we're going to close the additional details screen as we want to show you what else is available on this order details form. As you can see, you can also look at the charging details by expanding that section. Uh, we aren't going to be using the charge portion at first, so probably the only reason you may want to look at the screen is if you want to see what the CPT code is for this particular order. You can close that back up. Uh, you can look at associated encounters, which this doesn't have any. You can also look at the history and the order annotation. 
And the order annotation is a section where you can add additional information if you want, and that will be included in the chart. So this is the order details screen. Now once you're finished with this, if you are completely finished ordering things on your patient, you will hit Save and Close ACI. Now we want to add a few more items, so we're going to click Save and Return to the ACI. And this will take us back to the field where we were. Now let's go ahead and click on the RX tab. We'll show you how to order medications. And basically this works in pretty much the same way as ordering labs and procedures. You're going to type the medication in this field. And we're going to go ahead and order some Paxil for this patient. So we're just going to type in PAX. And again, because it wasn't in our favorites list, it didn't automatically pull up. So we're going to click the binoculars. And we get a, several different forms of Paxil that you can order on the patients. So we're going to check one of these. And again, our order details box, or medication details in this case, came up. So we're going to choose the link to. Um, in this case, we'll just choose health maintenance, since we don't really have an active problem that makes any sense on this patient. And then we're going to go ahead and fill in our SIG details, uh, how often you want the patient to take the medication, the quantity, and that sort of thing. Fill in the days here. The, the quantity automatically filled in because we chose one tablet daily. And in the additional details section, um, here you will need to pull in the ordered by because we, we are actually currently logged in as a nurse. So you will have to fill in these fields. So we're going to order by, and again, we're just going to choose one of our fake physicians. And as you notice, it pulled that same name into the managed by field. Now, if you notice the supervised field is grayed out, that's because we are in the same note, we are on the same patient, so it is automatically going to assume that it's supervised by the physician that we pulled in on the order details screen when we ordered the lab. So again, as you notice here, you can scroll down and see, you can also look at the patient's medication history here, and again, on this screen, you can also add an annotation. So once you're finished with that, you can hit save and return to ACI. And we want to show you over here in the history builder on the left hand side of this screen. If you notice the the thing the two things that we've ordered so far have pulled in here in this lovely pink color, uh, the Paxil 20 milligrams and the sedimentation rate. Um, the green smiley face next to the sedimentation rate means that this is um, it's okay with the patient's insurance, okay? We have, you know, the patient had an active problem of rheumatoid arthritis. Ordering an ESR for that makes perfect sense, so you get a little green smiley face. Ordering Paxil for an active problem of health maintenance, eh, maybe not, you know, um, that may not so much mesh with the patient's insurance formulary, so we don't get any smiley face there. The other options you will also see is a yellow a yellow face that has no emotion whatsoever and a red frowny face. The yellow face means that it is acceptable, accepted by the patient's insurance but it's not the best choice. The red frowny face means that it um, is not accepted by the patient's insurance. It's not on their formulary. Okay, um, we want to show you how to set a particular item as a favorite. Um, this is very, very easy to do, and as we said earlier, we highly suggest that you do this. As soon as you pull up a medication, um, this also works for active problems, chief complaints, things like that, uh, you can right-click here in this field and just check favorite item. Now let's go back up, let's clear out the PAX, and let's hit PAX again. As you can see, without even hitting enter, it automatically pulled up that Paxil 20 milligram oral tablet because we have made that a favorite. So that's very, very easy to do. Okay, the rest of the tabs on this screen work basically in the same manner. All of the tabs will bring up an additional details screen, as we saw with both the medication and the labs. 
Let's type on the immunization tab. And let's type HEP in the search field. And this is going to pull up our various hepatitis options. And we're going to check Hep B, hepatitis B. <clears throat> now, as you notice here, the order entry screen pulls up, which allows you to choose a SIG. And here we're going to choose new structured, which will populate a variety of choices. Um, as you can see, you can choose the um, mode of injection if it was implanted or infused. You can put in the number of milligrams. And this, this field right here is a required field, and this shows where the injection was given. So if it was intramuscular, we're going to choose intramuscular and that fills that field in. Basically anything in yellow is a required field and has to be filled in. Now something else we want to show you is it, on this screen there are two tabs. You have the order entry tab and you also have the record administration tab. The record administration gives, allows you to put in the details. So if you have um, an NDC number, if there's an expiration date on this particular uh, batch of vaccine, um, manufacturer lot number, all of that information can be put in here. Now let's go back to the order entry screen. I want to show you one other thing while we're here. If you scroll down to the bottom, this also has an annotation section. Um, one of our clinics has asked us about um, they apparently 10 care patients have a vaccines for children program that they have to keep track of and this is where you would you would annotate that information so if this is a 10 care patient and they're receiving this as part of the vaccines for children program you could you could add that text there okay so let's uh, save and return to the ACI and let's click on the follow-up slash referral tab we want this patient to come back for a follow-up visit. In the search field here, you can just type follow or referral. And you can choose, you know, if you want them to come back in three days, three weeks, three months, whatever. <clears throat> now, again, if you choose one of these, another details screen is going to call pull up. Here you'll do a link to so if you want them to just to come back for health maintenance, you can choose that. And if, if they are seeing you, you'll be checking the internal radio button. And then down the provider field, you can click the binoculars, pull your own name in, click OK. And this will send a task to the front desk to schedule so that they can go ahead and schedule that follow-up appointment. And basically the same thing, it works the same way for a referral, except you would, of course, choose the external radio button and then pull that position in. So let's go ahead and save and return. And that basically covers the ACI and ordering labs and medications. Uh, we hope this has been helpful for you. And do please feel free to get in here, familiarize yourself with, um, with these tabs. And, yeah, one other thing we would like to point out, once you are, are live in the system, when you finish with the ACI, you will need to hit this Commit button. Basically, this means that you're saving your changes. You will get an Encounter Summary when you hit Commit. This gives you kind of a second chance to look over everything that you've added. If everything is correct, you're going to hit Save and Continue. That's sort of the last step of that. And then you're finished with that patient. So we appreciate your taking the time, and if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.